Hi and welcome to the seventh episode of the Neuroendocrine Cancer Nutrition Series which is on zinc. So zinc is an essential trace element from food. Problems with zinc are actually rare in the average healthy person um, and most people who take zinc supplements don't actually need them. But certain neuroendocrine cancers um, can cause a problem with zinc and this is why I'm highlighting it. There are multiple vitamins and minerals that are also going to be highlighted in future episodes. So what does zinc do? So zinc is required for the activity of over 300 enzymes within the body and zinc is involved in the processing of fat, carbohydrate and protein. It also helps wound healing and with the fighting of infection. So in terms of absorption of zinc, when we eat or take supplements, zinc is primarily absorbed at the top of the small intestine. So this includes the duodenum and the very top of the jejunum, where the upper intestine has been removed by surgery in long lengths, or long lengths are left but diseased, absorption by the oral route by taking supplements and eating food will always be poor. Absorption from food in people with an intact and healthy upper intestine is mainly affected by phytates, which are within whole grains, legumes, nuts and seeds. However, large amounts of supplemental iron in about 25 milligrams per day may decrease zinc absorption as well. So take your iron supplements between meals. So there are several causes of zinc deficiency. It can be due to inadequate intake, inadequate absorption, increased losses of zinc from the body or increased requirements for zinc. Cells with a rapid turnover rate such as the immune system or gastrointestinal system or skin are particularly vulnerable to zinc deficiency accounting for the initial effects seen as dermatitis, diarrhoea, loss of appetite and alopecia. So see last week's episode on hair loss for that one. Even mild to moderate degrees of zinc deficiency can impair the whole range of white blood cell activities and other adverse alterations in your immunity. Severe deficiency causes hair loss, impotence, reduced fertility in men, eye and skin lesions, also weight loss, delayed healing of wounds, taste abnormalities and mental lethargy can occur. So who's at risk then? Surgical resection and bypass of the upper intestine, especially the duodenum, may cause zinc deficiency. Digestive diseases such as Crohn's disease and cancer with or without resulting short bowel syndrome can decrease zinc absorption and increase zinc losses, primarily from the gastrointestinal tract but to a lesser extent from the kidneys. Other diseases associated with zinc deficiency include different malabsorption states, for example pancreatic exocrine insufficiency when this is not treated with pancreatic enzyme replacement therapy, see the first episode for this, um, can result in zinc deficiency. Other causes include um, chronic liver disease, um, chronic renal disease, sickle cell disease and diabetes. Not only can zinc deficiency cause diarrhoea, but chronic diarrhoea conditions can cause zinc deficiency. So through excessive loss of zinc, basically, therefore promoting even more diarrhoea. So putting this into context of neuroendocrine cancer, a study that we finished last year um, involved 66 patients, mainly with small intestinal neuroendocrine cancers, and just over 50% of those patients were deficient in zinc, possibly reflecting significant malabsorption of zinc in this patient group. All of these patients were on somatostatin analogues and all were at risk of diarrhoea from multiple causes. Some of them had diseased upper intestines or removal of the upper intestine, some had pancreatic exocrine insufficiency and some were at risk of carcinoid syndrome. So many patients are deficient in zinc and therefore it's useful to get a blood test done, especially after surgery to the duodenum or the upper part of the jejunum, or if you've got symptoms of zinc deficiency because you've got other risk factors going on. It's important to note that the blood test results will reflect your blood levels and even if the results come back normal, you may still be deficient. This is because the tissues release zinc back into the bloodstream as like a panic effect when blood levels drop. So speak to your doctor about your symptoms alongside your result. They may still trial a supplement for a short period to see if it helps you. So in terms of sources of zinc, 
People at risk of deficiency need to include good sources of zinc in their daily diets. Meat, eggs and shellfish are the richest dietary sources, but grains, peas, beans, nuts and lentils are also rich sources. However, they do contain high levels of phytates, which minimise the absorption. Supplemental zinc might be appropriate if you have deficiency risk factors or you have a proven zinc deficiency with a blood test. I say or because it can be difficult in some places to get these zinc blood tests done. Um, of course, if you don't have a healthy intact duodenum and upper jejunum, you will have to get your zinc via a different route and that usually means straight into the bloodstream. Vegetarians may require 50% more zinc than non-vegetarians. The bioavailability of zinc from vegetarian diets is lower than from non-vegetarian diets because vegetarians do not eat meat, which is high in bioavailable zinc. In addition, vegetarians typically eat high levels of those legumes and whole grains which contain the phytates and bind to zinc and therefore inhibit its absorption. So that's it for this week. See you next Wednesday for a new topic in episode 8.